In today's video lecture, we're going to cover an introduction to optimization. This will be pretty basic just to give you an idea of what is optimization all about. So optimization is the theory of trying to find optimal points in a system. So the points in the system where you find a maximum or a minimum. So optimization refers to a set of algorithms which can be applied to a mathematical model of a system so that you can find, just for some examples, the best design. So if you're designing a heat exchanger, for example, you might want to um, try and get the number of pipes that result in a minimal pressure drop, the number in, and size of pipes. You might want to, if you're, trying, if you're doing automotive design, you might want to try to solve for the size of an engine block that results in the best combination of speed and efficiency where you can weight those two. So if you're designing a performance car, you might have a heavier emphasis on the speed. And if you're designing an economy car, you might have a heavier emphasis on the efficiency of the engine. You might try and find the lowest cost in a system. So if you're in um, supply chain and logistical planning for transportation, you might want to try and find the combination of truck routes to transport a set amount of raw material between point A and point B that results in the lowest total cost where the total cost would be a combination of labor, truck maintenance, fuel, and possibly other costs. You might use optimization theory to find the highest efficiency in a power production system by finding the right combinations of inputs, so flows, temperatures, and pressures, the right combination of those that gives you maximum efficiency if you're trying to generate a certain amount of power. So when you're optimizing a system, in this class so far we've focused a lot on modeling and modeling is critical in optimization. So optimization involves testing out many different combinations of inputs to determine what the resulting output is going to be under each circumstance. So if you're trying to maximize um, efficiency in a power production system, you want to find the right, um, the right combination of inputs that give you that maximum efficiency. So instead of doing this on an actual operating system and just guessing and checking, um, it's really not practical to do that. If you're trying to optimize the cost to build a building with certain specifications, I mean, you can't just guess and check, buy a certain combination of materials and then build a building and then evaluate the cost. You want to do all of this work before you build the building, before you make that big investment, because that's the whole point of trying to optimize the design. So you need to come up with math that relates your inputs to your output, so to the total cost, for example. So optimization it requires a mathematical model of the system. So this is just the math that relates the inputs to the outputs. So if you use a model of the system to iterate, you can really test out a, a wide variety of different combinations without actually having to touch the system itself. So you, there may just be some computational limitations. So as I've explained optimization, I've sort of described it as guessing and checking or just trying out a bunch of different combinations. And really optimization theory is much more sophisticated than just guessing and checking. That process, trying all possible combinations, that's known as enumeration. And when, you're, when you have a system that has a lot of inputs, hundreds or thousands of different inputs, the number of possible combinations that you can try out just becomes enormous and you don't really, it could take a ton of computational power to figure out what the optimal combination is. So optimization theory has algorithms that are custom made to find the optimal solution without having to try every single possible combination or without having to completely enumerate the system. This is what an optimization problem typically looks like. There are different parts. So in this case, by convention, optimization problems are typically set up as minimization problems. So if you're trying to maximize something, what you actually want to do is minimize the negative of the thing you're trying to maximize. And that's just convention. Most solvers will require you to set up your problem as a minimization problem, but it's as simple as just switching the sign on your objective function. So maximizing a positive number would be the same as mi minimizing the additive inverse of that number or the negative of that number. So an optimization problem has something called an objective function. So an objective function, this would be the cost that you're trying to minimize or the efficiency that you're trying to maximize or, um, or the profit that you're trying to maximize. So you take those costs, you take those numbers, you, you add them up, you put them all on the same basis. So if you're measuring profit, for example, in dollars per minute, 
you want to get each term that represents your profit. So you'd have your revenue. You'd want to express that in dollars per minute. And then you might have your labor and material costs. You'd also want to express those in dollars per minute. And you'd have each of those terms adding or subtracting to give you the total profit or the total cost. So the objective function all gets um, calculated there. That's shown by f. And this is a scalar value. We also have our decision variable. So the optimization problems are typically set up like this. So it says min, and then just below that min, it has x. So that x refers to the set of variables that are independent or that are decision variables. These are the degrees of freedom that you can actually change in your system to give you that optimal result. And even though I've only used one variable there, this is actually a vector that has many different decision variables in it. So if you have flow rate and temperature and pressure, you can, and each of those is a, a degree of freedom or an independent variable, you can mathematically organize those into a vector and um, have your problem set up look like this. The equations here are known as constraints. So you, every system typically has some kind of constraints. For example, a flow rate can't go below zero. You can't have a negative flow rate. That same flow rate might also have an upper constraint. If your valve can only go 100% open, which would correspond to a particular flow rate. So you don't want your optimizer trying to find optimal points that are outside of what's called the feasible region of the problem. So if your optimizer tells you that your optimal flow rate is negative two kilograms per minute, well, you know that that's not a feasible solution. So it, so the solving the optimization problem hasn't really done you any good. So you want to put constraints on variables like that. So the first types of constraints we have are constraints on the decision variables themselves. <coughs> so with x represented in a vector, these other variables lb or the lower bound and ub or the upper bound would also be represented as vectors and each element in that vector would correspond to one of the elements in our x vector or the or a particular decision variable. In our system we might deal with what are called equality constraints. So these equality constraints are here we might embed certain laws of physics or certain restrictions on our system where certain combinations, linear or nonlinear combinations of our input variables might have to equal a certain number in our system for it to obey the laws of physics, for example. So we might represent those constraints as equality constraints. We might also deal with inequality constraints. So that's where certain combinations of our input variables um, have to be either below or above a certain number, but they can be anywhere in between. So they are only constrained when they hit a certain limit. And we'll give examples of how to solve optimization problems uh, later in a future video demonstration. There are different types of optimization problems. So depending on the complexity and the structure of your model, you're going to want to use a certain solver. And those solvers are typically broken up into different types. So one type of optimization problem is called a linear program. In a linear program, your objective function is a linear function of all your decision variables. And your constraints are also linear functions of all your decision variables. In a quadratic program, your objective function is a quadratic function of your decision variables, while your constraints are all linear with respect to the decision variables. There's a nonlinear program where both the objective function and the decision variables can be nonlinear functions. I mean, so your objective function and the constraints can be nonlinear functions of the decision variables. Nonlinear programs are typically a lot harder to solve than a QP or an LP. So typically, if you can formulate your problem as a QP or an LP, you probably should. But solving the problem as an NLP or a nonlinear program generally lets you have more flexibility on the model. Having a nonlinear model generally lets you be more accurate in your modeling but then the optimization problem becomes a little bit more difficult to solve. But if you can get a reasonably accurate linear or quadratic model of your system, then the optimization problem is much more easy to solve by comparison. There are also mixed integer programs, and those can be either mixed integer linear programs or mixed integer nonlinear programs. And that's basically, the mixed integer means that some of your decision variables, instead of being able to vary on a continuous scale, like a flow rate could vary from 0 to 5, for example, 
a um, having it be a mixed integer problem, that decision variable can only take on discrete values. So like an open closed valve, for example, the valve can either be open or it can be closed, but it can't be anywhere in between. So if you wanted to include a variable like that, an open closed variable, into an optimization problem as a decision variable, you'll have to formulate your problem as a mixed integer linear program or a mixed integer nonlinear program. So in a mixed integer linear program, it's a lot like a linear program where the objective function and the constraints are linear with respect to the decision variables, but then some of those decision variables can only be discrete values. For example, a zero or a one, or only integers, zero, one, two, three, four. And similarly, for a nonlinear program, your objective and constraints can be nonlinear, but then some of those decision variables can only take on discrete values. So to solve an optimization problem, first you need to develop a model of the system. And you need to consider what form you're trying to get that model in. So if you want it to be an easier optimization problem, you should probably try and work with a linear or a quadratic model. But if those just aren't accurate enough, then you might need to go to a nonlinear model. And if you have decision variables that can only take on discrete values, then you need to get into mixed integer forms of the models. And the way they're listed here is in terms of increasing complexity. So linear, quadratic, nonlinear, and then mixed integer would be the most complex. So you need to determine your objective function. So what is the thing that you're trying to minimize or maximize? So it's usually a combination of additive terms, as I mentioned before. So profit could be the sum of the revenue minus the sum of the costs. By convention, most solvers will require you to set up your problem as a minimization problem. And if it is, in actuality, a maximization problem, well, then you need to minimize the negative of that thing that you are trying to maximize. <coughs> so you need to determine your cons constraints, and your constraints might require you to do some extra modeling so that you're making sure that you're capturing those constraints accurately in your model. And then you need to take all that math that you come up with and put it into the form that's required by your solver. So this typically takes some careful manipulation and some careful thought. And you might need to take a scalar problem and put it into matrix form. So just getting the problem to set up in the right way is typically 80% of the battle. Just working through all that math, getting the right model, and formulating that into your solver. That's typically where most of the work goes in. But if you're careful and meticulous, then solving the optimization problem may not be as hard. I mean, there are some extremely complex optimization problems with, with thousands or even millions of variables and constraints that are just extremely difficult to solve. But generally, if you're trying to solve a simple problem, most of the effort is going to be in, in the modeling and the problem setup. So stay tuned. In future videos, we'll give some examples. And probably this is where this whole concept of optimization will start to sink in a little bit better when we actually go through examples. So the next video will be a demonstration of how to actually solve an optimization problem, and we'll give a couple of examples in subsequent videos.